It's not uncommon that an embroidery design can be sewn in different color depending on the garment that you're stitching that design on. Take for example my Wilcom logo. On this black shirt, the text is white. But on a white shirt, the text would be black to match our standard branding of the Wilcom logo as shown on my business card. Now that color sequence in Wilcom is called a colorway. And the best place to store your colorway is in the actual embroidery file. It's therefore good when you print off your production worksheet, you have a permanent record of all the colors that vary from garment to garment. So let's dive a little bit deeper and walk you through how you do read coloring in Wilcom Embroidery Studio 2025. Now I've got this design open on screen. Uh, which is a standard embroidery design made in Wilcom. But as you can see, it's got very vibrant, bright colors. And we'll touch on why that's the case in just a moment. But first of all, let's dive in a little bit deeper and look at the color palette area in Wilcom Embroidery Studio down the bottom here. Now, the first option is your colorway selector. At the moment, I've only got one colorway in my design. This is where you set up the different colors for your design on different types of garments. Now in the next icon here, we can modify the background settings of that design. Because when you're building a design for a particular color garment, you also want the background of that design to be represented in the embroidery file as well. So if we select this option, we can now modify the background settings of this design. Now by default, it uses a solid color but you can also set it to be a fabric. Now for this particular design here, I know that the first version of this design will be on like a cream colored polo shirt and the design will have shades of brown, which we've already decided with the customer. So I'm gonna change from solid color to a fabric. I'll keep it at the pure cotton fabric, but I can select from any of the fabrics available in the Wilcom software. And I will change the color and I'll use this, uh, tan color that I've got here. And when I click OK, my background has now been updated to look like poly cotton fabric with that cream tan color, which matches the polo shirt that I'll be putting that design on. Now the next section that we jump over here is this green square here, which is your current color icon. Now what this does is it represents whatever color you've got selected in the color palette. At the moment, I've got color number one selected. If I change it to color four, it becomes four and five, seven and nine. It just shows you whatever color you've got selected. Even though in the palette, we do have a dark border around the selected color, it just represents it here. So any new object you create will be created inside that color that you've got selected. Now, if you look at my color palette, I've got 15 colors available to use. The colors that are used in the design have a small blue rectangle in the top right corner. And the ones that aren't used, don't. Now you might also notice that again, my design looks a bit strange. It's bright, vibrant colors. Well, it is deliberately so. When you're digitizing an embroidery design, and in particular design like this, which I know has very close shades of brown throughout the entire design, if I'm digitizing in the actual thread colors of the design, those threads could blend a little bit on screen and I could find it very difficult to see some detail, especially when I'm zooming in on areas like this where there's this color on top of this color on top of this color on top of this color. If they're all shades of similar brown like I know this design is, it's difficult to see. But more so, if you have a bitmap or an image of that artwork in the real colors in the background and you're digitizing with the real colors on top, then you're not really gonna be able to see the embroidery that you've digitized on top of that artwork. It'll blend in to the flat background and again, make it difficult to see. And our job is to keep an eye on those stitches and make sure that they're stitching exactly as we want it to be. So the Wilcom default palette is deliberately so highly contrast. Those colors are contrast between each other. So when you're digitizing, you can easily see each object and each layer of that embroidery design. Now the default palette has 15 colors on it. If your design has more than 15 colors, you can click the add color button and add additional colors. Or if it got less, you can take it away using the remove color button. Now it's also important to point out 
that the palette in Wacom is not just the colors, but it also represents the needles on your embroidery machine. Now, there are some embroidery machines like certain Baradins, Tajima, ZSKs, and many others that support what we call needle assignment. What that means is if you digitize an object on color or needle number seven, when you export that design to a stitch file format that supports needle assignment, that machine can automatically move to needle number seven for your machine operator. Now that's pretty good if you've got your common colors set up on um, predictable needles. For example, maybe white is on needle one and your black is on your last needle, needle number 15. If you set up your color palette to have that and you select those, that's just one extra choice your machine operator, operator does not have to do when they're setting up that design on the machine. It can potentially remove the risk of error and choosing the wrong needle for that particular color. But of course you don't need to do that. You can just use the default palette and reassign them when you load that design on the machine. Now, here I've got my standard design with these high contrast colors, which is great for digitizing, not so great for keeping a record of what my customer wants to have stitched out on the machine. So again, I've got my first color palette configured. I can then add more colorways. And I can do that by adding the thread for my actual thread palette or my thread chart into that design. Now the final option over here is the threads docker. When you open the threads docker, you can see the thread chart that you've got set up for your Wilcom embroidery software. And before I set up my next colorway or the existing colorway, I need to make sure I've got the right thread chart selected. Now by default, you'll have the Wilcom thread chart set up in your software. Now at the moment, I've got the pink color selected and you might notice it's automatically sorted the palette to show the pink style colors at the top. If I choose green, it will auto sort the palette to show the green at the top and the blue and the red and so on and so forth. So it will automatically sort your thread chart to the closest color you've got selected in your palette below. But let's get rid of the Wacom default palette and let's choose your palette that you want to use in your business. To do that, you select on the Manage Threads icon. And I've got the default Wacom selected, so we'll get rid of that. And I'll scroll down and find the Madeira Classic 40, which is a chart that I use. And we'll grab that there and add that. You can add more, but obviously the more charts you add, the more thread you have listed in your palette. If you want, you can manage and create your own unique thread chart and only add the colors that you have in your business because you might have a, a bit of Madeira, a bit of Robin, Robertson Anton, a bit of Sulky. You can mix it up and build your own custom thread chart. But for now, I'm gonna go with the default Madeira Classic 40 and we'll click OK. And it's now added that palette to my list. So now when I click green, I've got a lot more greens to choose from and a lot more blues and a lot more reds and a lot more of every other color in my palette. And again, it will automatically sort that chart and put the matching colors to the top. But in this case, I've already had this discussion with my customer and we've already agreed on which Madeira thread charts they want to have for that embroidery design. So if you know the codes of the thread that you want to add to your design, you can manually choose those threads from that thread chart. First of all, select the color you want to add it to. In this case, the color number one, which is this background. Up in the color code, enter the code you're looking for. In this case, it's Madeira 1022. It will automatically search and find it. And all you need to do is press enter. It will assign that color to that thread uh, stop or that needle stop. Now we go to the second one. And I wanna make that be uh, 1192. And then we'll go to the third one. And I want that to be uh, 1173. So now I've got those correct shades of brown. And if you remember earlier, when I mentioned about having those close shades, if I come in here and turn off True View, they're starting to blend. It'll be really difficult to digitize and see those stitches clearly. That's why I digitize in those contrast colors and you swap out with the real colors when you're finished doing your design. So I've made that first color setup. If I go now to my print preview, and we'll bring that back to be just a single sheet, the production worksheet for now. And if I zoom in, we can see I've now got the correct colors saved against my design. 
Needle number one, or color number one, sorry, is needle number one, which is the Madeira 1022. Color number two is needle number two, Madeira 1192. Color number three is back to needle number one, 1022. And finally, color number four is needle number three, Madeira 1173. So I've got my first colorway set up ready to go. But again, sometimes we can sew this design on different colored garments. And in this particular job, this design is also going on some dark blue or navy polo shirts. So now I want to set up an additional colorway. This is where we close off our thread chart and we come down to our colorway editor. When you select that, up pops your colorway editor where you see your colorways on top and your thread chart on the bottom. Now I've already set the background color for this. It's the uh, tan or um, beige kind of background cream background polo shirt. I can rename this. We can call it cream polo. And now I want to add a brand new colorway. I'll call it navy polo. And I'll base it off the cream one. It'll just copy across those colors by default. And the first thing I want to do, I want to go into my background. I want to change the cream color to be uh, more of a dark blue color. And now I'm ready to set up my color for those navy garments. Now again, you select the color. Now, if you don't know your colors, you can just scroll through and we'll find a kind of a lighter blue. We'll do this one here, double click. And it goes down to the next one, which is a bit more of a darker blue. So we'll scroll down and find a dark blue color. Maybe this one here. And the final one is a bit of a mid-range blue. So uh, we might grab this one here. So if you don't know your colors, you can just manually scroll through, select those colors for that embroidery design. And if we go back to our print preview, we now have two worksheets, one for the cream polo shirt and one for the navy polo shirt. If you click under your options and turn on your production summary and make sure under colorways, you've got all selected, not just current or a particular one, select all and click OK. This will give you a summary sheet, very similar to what I showed in an earlier video that you can print out. It will show your logo and the colors for the cream and the colors for the navy arm polo shirt. So that's how easy it is to store your embroidered colors against your embroidered design. Now the last and final very important thing you need to do, every time you make any changes to your embroidery design, you want to make sure you save that design as a Wilcom EMB file. If you export it only as a stitch file, you're gonna lose all that valuable information. So make sure you save as, as a Wilcom all-in-one EMB file and give it a name, designed with colors. And that way you will forever have all that color information stored against that embroidery design. Now let's open up another design. And we'll grab this Bernie's organic uh, logo here. Now, sometimes when you build a design or when you're given a design from an outsource or a customer, it does have colors set against that design. In this case, it's got the green, the yellow, the orange, the white, darker green, and a few other shades. So they are visually correct colors, but they aren't matching real thread colors from a real thread chart. There might be PMS, it might be what the graphic designer created when they made that logo. But at least visually on screen, it looks correct. But in embroidery, we need the actual real thread chart for that design. Well, when you open up a design that has these generic colors already listed on it, there is a very quick way to automatically match those generic colors to a real color in your embroidery thread chart. And that's when you scroll down to this icon here, which is the match all icon. When you click on this, it will automatically match every single color in that design to a real color from your selected embroidery thread chart. Again, I've got Madeira. So it now says that green is actually a Madeira 1051 and the orange is a 1064 and the copper is a 1065 and so on. It's matched every single one of those colors, which again will appear on the production worksheet for my operator to stitch out on the embroidery machine.